Okay, need to give this a bit of a run up as a ramp. Bit of a jump off the top. Well, this uh, ceiling seems very close indeed. Wild. Oh, it's a deck specifically for motorcycles, I think. I'm not sure. Right, I'll get strapped down and I'll see you in the cabin. So, I'm in. Absolutely humongous ship, an incredible place. Just looking at this uh, gump here that I've got. It's got uh, like 12 decks, it's got uh, conference centres, spa and fitness centre, it's got uh, casinos, it's got shows, it's got receptions, grand buffet, tax-free markets, Aqualand, whatever that is, um, bars, nightclubs, observation decks, you name it, it's a full-blown, you know, it's basically a cruise ship that uh, that you're just on for a day, which is probably long enough, I've never been on a cruise ship before, don't really fancy them, but uh, but no, this looks like it's going to be good for the next 24 hours, so uh, yeah, so anyway, let me just show you the cabin here, this is a bit better than the last uh, ferry, so let me just show you this, look, there you go, yeah, it's quite posh for, you know, given we're in a, in a ship here, I've just quickly had a just quickly had a shower and it's all that was all very functional I'm glad to say is the little unsweetie bit okay works an absolute treat so yeah and the uh, aircon in here absolutely brilliant so it's lovely and cool I mean it's been 30 degrees on the box today absolutely cooking when I got here so the shower is most welcome now what I need to do is just uh, get my bearings on the ship though and have a little look around all right speak to you later Well, it's certainly not like any ferry I've been on before. So it's a bit like one of those um, hotels you get in Vegas where if you find yourself in the wrong spot it's a flipping long walk back to your room so uh, I'm trying to find my room and it's, it's about a quarter of a mile walk from here. Unbelievable. Amazing boat. Really quite something. Okay, so there we are, that's the ship. Um, looking forward to a, a safe and quiet crossing. Good night's sleep, and then I'll see you tomorrow in the morning where we're off uh, on the bikes in Norway, off to Lillehammer. So uh, should be a great ride tomorrow, so see you then. Well, good morning, everybody. And welcome to Norway, where as you can see, we're just about to disembark this amazing boat where we've had a top night. And about to see what the weather's doing this side. It's uh, due to be another 30 degree day, so it should be an absolutely cracking ride today. Stick around and stay tuned. So welcome to uh, Oslo, folks. And there's that uh, magnificent ship that we uh, crossed over on last night, or ferry. 
And there was some debate whether it's a ship or a boat, but we won't go into that due to hull design and how it turns. Really, it's complicated. Anyway, I say welcome to Oslo. We're just going to basically transit our way out of here and get uh, get up to the nice stuff as we head towards Lillehammer. I've been lucky enough to uh, be to come to Oslo a few times in my time. First time I came here, I was uh, 17. Bit of a long story, but. Uh, I, uh, I won something called the Young Scientist of the Year competition in about 1984 or something like that. And uh, that was the British Young Scientist of the Year. And then there was a, uh, an international competition which I represented Great Britain in. And the final for that was here in Oslo. And that was the first time I'd ever been abroad, really. Incredible now, when I think about it. Anyway, I'm not going to go into details about the whole Young Scientist of the Year thing. <laughs> it's all a bit embarrassing. But anyway. It's lovely to be back. And since that first visit, I've been back a few times for work, unfortunately. Back in the bad old days when I did a proper job. So never really got to explore much. So really looking forward to uh, the next few days of exploring this splendid country. So one of the great things about these uh, motorad tours, as I think I probably mentioned at the start, is you can take it as you wish. You don't have to follow the group. As I mentioned, there's five in our group, and uh, basically the plan for today is I think we're going to arrive for about half an hour and have a stop just to get out of Oslo, and then uh, personally I'm going to split up and do my own thing, just so I can stop and take some pictures, maybe send the drone up, and uh, you know, I know what hotel we're at tonight, I'll see the rest of the team up there then, and I think some of the other guys are going to do the same, maybe do some variants on the route, that way you can sort of please yourself. It makes sense to stay in a group when you're doing this complicated stuff, navigating capital cities and so on. And Oslo is a pretty huge place. In fact, I read that Oslo is, by geography, is the largest capital city in the world. Now, I don't know what they mean by geography. I assume area in between the metropolitan borders, as it were. But it's uh, an incredible fact if that is indeed true, because, of course, Norway itself doesn't have a huge population, just over 4 million, I think, when you think that London has 8 million alone. Uh, and that's not claiming to be the biggest capital city. So I guess Oslo just has a very big spread. Somebody else described it as the uh, largest village in the world. So uh, whatever the facts are and whatever the definitions are, clearly it's a big chunk of land. Right, I'm going to concentrate on getting out of the city and I'll uh, speak to you en route. Stay tuned. How cool is this? An amazing building over there. It sort of disappears into the sea. Certainly a lot of uh, building going on in this part of town. Always a good sign. Sign of a vibrant economy of course. I've no idea whether it is in Norway or not. Impressive. So a couple of things have struck me as I've uh, ridden through Oslo this morning. <laughs> One is that it's a very green city. There's lots of trees right in the middle of town. This isn't a particularly tree-lined spot, but pretty much everywhere we've been there have been trees in the middle, which is lovely. And I remember that from when I came all those years ago. And the other thing is just how quiet it is. I mean, this is actually, again, this is a busy bit, but uh, riding through the centre of town, given it's a Monday morning, it's, it's pretty much deserted. Just imagine going through uh, London at any time of day on a Monday, let alone uh, just after rush hour. Incredible. And very nice, frankly. Checking out the reflections. Ah, I can see green and pleasant lands ahead. Excellent. I love that wave thing you can do when you ride on the right. Brilliant. So we're just ambling our way out of uh, out of Oslo now on this beautiful day, and. Uh, one of the things that's great actually about using the uh, sat nav on the BMW, I've uh, criticised the nav 5 lots as a, as a navigator, but it does lots of other things that are great. One of the things is it knows what the local speed limits are. Uh, and here in Norway in particular, I understand they're pretty hot on speed limits and they don't have any tolerance for going over the speed limits. So I'm going to be riding, obviously, within them, uh, if I possibly can. And uh, one of the good things is the nav shows you what the speed limit is. So at the moment, 
in miles an hour, it's a 37 mile an hour speed limit look and I'm doing 37 so uh, so that's great and that, that digit there, I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro but it goes red uh, if I go over the speed limit so it's a good visual indicator so that's going to be very handy here in Norway man I've so lucked out on the weather on my tours this year makes a real change, I mean I don't want to sp speak too soon because of course it's a long way to go yet and uh, things could change but today, my word absolute blinder I'll tell you what, it's lovely to see so much greenery here in Norway I mean it's not uh, surprising of course but uh, this summer it's been so flipping hot at home that uh, all the grass and greenery has basically turned yellow and straw like so it's nice to actually come somewhere we can still get uh, some green wavelength in your eyes, does you good we're still not in the uh, in the proper picturesque stuff yet, but it's absolutely beautiful here. It's a lovely country to ride through. Nice roads, not a lot of traffic. Really looking forward to the next few days. It's going to be cracking. Massive satellite earth station there. Sitting amongst the pines, which smell absolutely gorgeous, by the way. Good if you get a view of that. Oh, there you go. Check that out. That is what you call the dish farm. Oh, absolutely amazing smell through here with the heat of the day. It's about 27 degrees now and about 11am. Uh, it's smelling absolutely beautiful in these pines. Just need to get onto some more rural roads now, lose a bit of this traffic would be nice. Well, this is starting to look more like it. Lovely road, this one. I think it's the... Uh, E16, I may be wrong. It's quite hard actually to keep track of what road numbers are here because a bit like some of the other uh, European countries they, they have different numbers meaning slightly different things for the same road and the sat nav certainly doesn't show them like it would do if you're riding in the UK. So that's just a little uh, confusion factor. Now for the first time ever on one of these trips I'm actually using this sat now for the purpose which it was designed as a you know, route planning device and uh, as I mentioned before one of the things that uh, Motorrad tours do for you is send you the routes beforehand so you can upload them to your sat nav which I did thinking well that's no good because I don't know how to follow them but uh, luckily our uh, erstwhile tour guide <laughs> Nigel up the front there uh, showed me how to actually follow the route on here. It's very easy actually. It's just that it was never in the manual for the thing So, you know, how you're supposed to do it. Basically you go to the front screen apps trip planner Select the trip that you want press go bingo and off you go and uh, it seems to work quite well So that's why I'm quite uh, happy to sort of break off from the group later I think we're all gonna pretty much go separate ways so that we can do our own thing and take photographs and what have you as we as we see fit but uh, I think we're just gonna bunch up here for the first coffee stop and then we'll say cheerio and then we'll meet up again at the hotel so it's a very civilized way to go about touring I think it takes all the pain out of it unusual little tunnel I like it well this is a beautiful spot this is the road now we've come off the uh, E16 and uh, I think this is the 245 but uh, again as the sat nav doesn't tell you when you're in Norway it's difficult to know but this runs up the side of a fjord called the Ransfjord so uh, if I see a good lookout point or a spot where I think I can get the drone up then I'm going to stop let these guys go and uh, try and put the fjord up uh, fjord put the drone up if it's not too windy it does look a bit breezy in the treetops though so it may not be possible but that's the plan certainly a much nicer riding road than the uh, the main sort of arterial road was generally speaking the uh, speed limit in Norway is 50 miles an hour and uh, the police have a reputation for being quite fierce in terms of massive fines if they catch you breaking it so frustrating that it is on these beautiful roads where you want to open her up it may not be worth the risk but obviously the further north you get the fewer police you see but then uh, again sort of run the gauntlet on that one don't you so we'll see how that goes beautiful spot down here though in the sunshine look at that gorgeous so this has actually turned into a beautiful biking road some lovely uh, turns here I mean it's got as soon as I turn the camera on 
we lose the twists and turns but uh, we just came through a great section with lots of twisties a real pleasure to ride and I'm glad to say that the uh, traffic's thinned right out now as well so uh, top day just splendid views after splendid views as often happens on these picturesque trips you know you get uh, gorgeous viewed out but uh, I ain't complaining so up ahead there that's Nige he's on the uh, he's our tour leader top fella military man as I think I mentioned before so very organized handy sort of chap to have about and he's on a brand new uh, GSA lovely motorcycle the traffic now what's going on outrageous these purple plants here absolutely gorgeous I don't know what they are the banks here but just adds a splash of color looks really gorgeous and in a weird way it reminds me a bit of uh, up on Loch Lomond you know, the A82 that goes up the western bank of it it's that sort of road nice uh, well potentially fast flowing roads and great views 27.5 degrees out here now when I signed up for a uh, Arctic tour <laughs> I never anticipated it was going to be 27 and a half degrees brilliant so beyond Neroa beyond Neroa is where we are now B-J-O-N-E-R-O-A if you're looking on the map beautiful little spot if you're into your boating amazing church up there nice lunch stop maybe so rather annoyingly I've just gone uh, off piste and uh, left the rest of the group because I just saw a little spot that I thought would be ideal for a bit of dronage just by a little lake there, picturesque spot. Unfortunately, had a technical issue, couldn't get the drone to work. So that's annoying, I'll have to wait for another time. So I'll get that fixed at the hotel tonight, but uh, very disappointing. Part of the reason why I bought the drone was for this very trip, so uh, hopefully I'll get that sorted tonight and I can bring you some dronage tomorrow. In the meantime, we'll just have to enjoy the rest of the trip up to the hotel in Lillehammer. So this road I'm on now I think is called the 213, it's sort of a uh, equivalent of a B road if you like, it's not a main road, it's a road that hugs the side of the fjord, the Rand Fjord, and here's a beautiful stretch of tarmac, it's got all these lovely twists and turns on it, and the tarmac itself is in top nick, and because it's a warm day it's nice and grippy, not sure what it's going to do for wear on the tyres, but uh, really nice to ride on, and at the risk of sounding antisocial, it's really nice actually to be riding on my own again. Nothing against riding in groups particularly, but I do find, as I've mentioned before on my videos, that I prefer to ride on my own. It's great that the rest of the group will be at the hotel I'm at tonight, so you know, we can do some socialising. When it comes to riding, I hate to either be feeling that I'm holding people up or feeling that I'm riding too fast and have to hold back for people. So it's quite nice in a way that the group is broken up and is all doing its own thing on different routes and uh, we'll all meet up again and discuss our day back at the hotel and again that is one of the beauties of uh, doing this sort of a tour where it's very kind of flexible you're not fixed on routes you're not fixed on sticking together you can just do your own thing look at this road unbelievable the problem of course is the speed limit is still 50 miles an hour on here even though this is a road you want to black down at about 70 <laughs> that would not be a good idea but at any speed a lovely lovely road to ride I was going to say very little traffic, but then a car spoiled it for me. It's interesting that the houses here, at least so far, on sort of day one of being in Norway, seem to be very spread out. They don't have sort of um, villages or town centres so much as we do in the UK and maybe France, or at least not around here. I don't know if it's because there's, uh, you know, just much more space to go around, as it were, a smaller population, and therefore they can be more spread. But buildings don't seem to be in clusters like they are elsewhere. You just get a single house on a, and a big bit of land and then the next one's somewhere away. You know, there are very few houses I've seen that have actually got next door neighbours, next door so to speak. And I like that a lot. Very civilised way to live, I think. 
What a cracking road. So according to the sat nav, I've got about another 50 odd miles to do. Probably take me about an hour, I guess, on these sorts of roads. And looking forward to checking out what Lillehammer has to offer. Of course, Lillehammer being uh, famous for the, being the site of the, or one of the sites for the Winter Olympics of, uh, I think it was 1992 or 94. Lillehammer being, of course, a bit of a ski centre. There's a ski jump there, apparently. I'm hoping I'm going to get to see that as well. How cool a way is this to spend a Monday afternoon? It's got to be better than being sat in the office, isn't it? Hope your Monday is going as well as mine. Just had another of those moments where the camera was switched off, but I so wish it was switched on. I was just riding down here minding my own business. I noticed it's a rather, well, what can only be described as beautiful blonde lady walking on the other side of the road. And as I approached, she gave me a big smile and waved. How splendid is that? I thought the day couldn't get any better. That doesn't happen to me at home. Marvellous. I'm liking Norway a lot. Oh, and to hell with the speed limits, by the way. It's too much fun to be driving at 50. Hope that's not a famous last words, officer. Still in the sort of lowlands of uh, Norway, I think, relatively speaking. These aren't the sort of classic fjord scenes you'd expect to see in Norway, or certainly not me. You know, the hills here are quite, uh, you know, lowish and, and rolling more than mountainous. It is beautiful, but it's not the classic steep-sided Norwegian fjords that you sort of expect. I think they're going to be coming later in the trip. I certainly hope so. Single speedboat out on the fjord. Beautiful way to spend your Monday afternoon. Well, it's all very well when you see it in this beautiful, uh, beautiful weather. I wonder what it's like here during the winter. Oh, I assume this is all snow covered. Must be pretty tough to live here then. Absolutely beautiful, but not an easy option, I imagine. Oh, lovely little spot down there. If only I had the drone working. Take off along that river. Oh, and go around this amazing bridge. If this dirty great white camper wasn't in the way. Oh, that would have been the perfect dronage spot. How annoying. What a cool bridge though. Again, this is the sort of bridge you just don't, you would never get a bridge like this in the UK. They just don't make them that shape. And it's kind of what defines these trips abroad, isn't it? Things like that, that are just different to what you're used to. Brilliant. Right, we're in Docker, apparently. Oh, and there's Lillehammer on the sign, so it's a little jink left and then a right, okay. So having said they don't tend to have towns and villages like uh, in the UK, this is a classic example, look. Very definitely a town. Albeit quite well spread. Right, well, might be an opportunity here to get by this fan, yes. and far between those so you have to take them. Quite a, uh, quite a serious little town actually. Nice place. Right, Lillehammer 56 on the 250. Here we go. 56k so that's uh, about 34 miles. Nice. Oh this is beautiful now. Lovely road, no traffic. Beautiful scenery, great grip, perfect temperature, bike with plenty of fuel on board. Only this cyclist to spoil it. <laughs> I take it back, he's not spoiling it. Or she. Try not to kill her in the process. Yeah! Why wouldn't you go motorcycling? It's just brilliant. People that don't do it or poo-poo the idea, well, they're missing out on life, aren't they? That's what it's all about. It's just good for the soul. I just saw a sign warning of moose crossing the road. That's not something you get in uh, Buckinghamshire. So I must remember that, keep an eye out for the odd itinerant moose. 
because if you hit one of those things, it's not going to end well, is it? Wow, it's getting proper wildernessy now. Oh, a wave opportunity. Hello, hello, my Viking friends. I love that left-hand wavy thing that people that ride on the right do. It's so cooler than the old head nodding thing that we have to do. And the beauty of it is they all seem to do it, regardless of what you're riding. It's good. Oh man, these roads are so good. They remind me very much of the roads in Spain. Look at that view, unbelievable. Beautiful verdant valley there. What is not to like, eh? Wow, now that is a view. Gorgeous. And another cracking road. Right, quick update, nine miles until Lillehammer. I'm in the sort of district of Lillehammer now, just past the sign welcoming me to the commune of Lillehammer. But the town itself, as I say, another nine miles to go, so intrigued to see what it looks like. Well, it's not a moose, but it still want to hit it. I want to stand there, mate. So just the part, last part now of uh, today's leg. Uh, Lillehammer is just uh, eight kilometres over that way. Rejoin the E6, which is the main sort of arterial road up this part of Norway, if you like. The main road as opposed to the back road that I've been doing. And I shall so shortly be there. So I shall find my uh, hotel. Settle in and uh, show you around. Over Farts Grenzen. Okay. I think I can see the ski jump over there. Howdy. Cool dude. Don't know if you can see it uh, on the GoPro, but just up on the side of the hill that those green mats, those are the ski jumps. Clearly they're covered in snow in winter. Just gone behind the trees now, I don't know if you got a glimpse. I hope you did. Bit of a cool bridge as we enter Lillehammer. Hello sir. What a beautiful spot. Now you can see the ski jumps up there, hopefully. So made it to the hotel here in um, Lillehammer. I've actually had to draw the curtains because it's so flipping hot in here and the sun is just beating straight in there and it's warming the room up and it's sort of defeating the aircon. So I'm leaving that shut for now. But uh, just doing a bit of catching up with uh, Facebook and stuff like that. I must just thank uh, this guy. Uh, I think his name is, where's he gone? Uh, Pal Rune Voss, because he's posted this picture on my Facebook profile. I don't know if you can see it there. And that's actually us on the boat this morning. Look, this is his house. He saw us go bar past on the boat. Isn't that brilliant? I love a small world like that anyway. So anyway, so this is the room here at the hotel. We're staying at the, this hotel is called the Clarion Hotel in Lillehammer. It's very, very nice. Parking's underground as well and secure, which is always a bonus. As you can see, quite a nice big room. Has got air con, but it is very, very warm in here. And uh, the bathroom, just to show you what that looks like, the hell of it. Typically sort of, uh, there we go sort of Nordic-y, it's all very good, I've had a shower and it's, uh, it's great. Okay, so tomorrow the plan is then quite a long day tomorrow compared to today and I'm absolutely whacked after today. So tomorrow we're down here, let me show you on the camera, at the moment we're here in Lillehammer and we're going to travel all the way up here, up these uh, green tinge roads, it's about 230 miles up to Trondheim and apparently Trondheim's a very nice city so we're going to have a bit of an early start to try and beat some of the heat and uh, and then hopefully have a look around Trondheim when we get there so uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a chance to look around Lillehammer tonight if I, if I do I'll, I'll put some shots in for you but otherwise it's Trondheim tomorrow so uh, stick around stay tuned hopefully tonight I'll get the drone fix so I can get some more drone pictures because that would really be the icing on the cake for this video and uh, speak to you tomorrow okay stay tuned well good morning folks the convoy starts this is uh, Lily Hammer at 8.30 on a Tuesday morning. Or is it Wednesday? Might be Wednesday by now. I love it when you forget what day of the week it is. Shows you're having a good time. So Lily Hammer turned out to be a nice little place. Quite a small town. A lovely little uh, sort of thoroughfare, some great bars and stuff. And uh, quite a nice hotel. Downside was, didn't have any aircon. 
which uh, seemed shocking at the time as it was sort of 31 degrees here and uh, he wasn't a waver <laughs> but uh, I went to reception and asked if there's anything wrong with the aircon and they said no and it turned out that's because there was no aircon when you live close to the Arctic Circle you don't generally need it which I thought was reasonable and then the other bit of bad news was I spent hours last night trying to get my drone to work and whilst the actual drone itself works the issue I've got is I can't actually link the controller to the drone I can fly it with my phone only but that is really difficult to do um, so I think I'm going to be droneless for this trip which is really annoying at best I might be able to get a couple of stills off the phone but uh, really gutted about that because one of the reasons I bought that drone was so that I could come on this trip and get some spectacular shots of the scenery which we are undoubtedly going to get so I'm pretty gutted about that I'll uh, have another play with it this evening but I don't hold out much hope good news is it's another beautiful day <laughs> 